Yo guys, what's going on? It is me, KLV, and today I'm going to talk about five ways on how you can get better aim and also get your KD higher in Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this is going to have nothing to do with team. This is going to be mainly as you, yourself, as the player, okay? And how you can get your KD higher. So, let's get straight into it. So, number one, I'm going to stick with this. I always do this every tutorial video, every tips, is warm up warm up warm up warm up is the key thing to just basically get better aim it's going to take you time as well to get better aim but basically when you're warming up what i like to do is i'll go into a t on go to matchmaking preferences have this set to elimination or disarm bomb one of them are both good both of them are really good the uh, disarm bomb is very hectic once you've planted the bomb elimination is good say for example you've just got back home you've been out or something and you've not played for like a week jump on elimination then do disarm bomb but if you've been playing it quite a lot disarm bomb is good just don't expect to actually uh beat it because it can get very hectic once you have uh planted the bomb so and then also have the map on coastline coastline is a very good map it's a medium sized map and it's kind of easy to just go around then what i'll do after once i have done the t hunts for about what i say 10 minutes i normally do is i go into a quick play I'm going to arcade and set it to free for all only and what this allows me to do is then only me has to get the kills i try and win three games in a row or i play for about 10 minutes what normally i end up doing is three games in a row and if my aim feels solid and i feels good then i'll jump into rank so the second tip is finding your own sense i see loads of people all the time copying people's sense copying this copying that what i'll say with sense is generally find your own but when it comes to vertical you want that on the lowest well not the lowest but you want it on low 25 is basically my area where i have it the reason why you want your vertical low is just because on it basically helps with recoil control and obviously vertical when you're controlling recoil you're having to pull down so you want to have a low a vertical you don't want to have a really high vertical because it just makes no sense you're not really going to be flicking up really high to the second story or third story all the time you shouldn't have to be flicking up to the top of the floor and stuff like that so you don't really need a high vertical but generally find your own sensitivity and what you're comfortable with it could be a slow it could be high find your own sensitivity stop copying people just because they're good at the game you see like let's just take the top a thousand champs for example they all gonna have a different sensitivity you won't see them all have the same sense they all have a different sensitivity so find your own sense these are no meta sense these are no sense that everyone does good at everyone has their own sense it's all personal preference so find your own sense number three now what i'm gonna i'm gonna explain this very carefully is baiting your team now if you're solo queuing yeah baiting your team can be good but never 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 in a five stack bait your team so you can get the kill for example, saying giving the wrong call out when you know he's somewhere else, or saying sight is free when you don't know sight is free. Basically saying basically getting your teammate killed so you can get the kill. Never do that in a five stack. The only way I would say you can use it is let's say your teammate is downed and the enemy does not know that you basically can see your down teammate. Then you can bait the down because a lot of people will then rush out get the kill on the down person and you can bait because it's downed if you get the kill on the guy you got the refrag your teammate shouldn't be mad at that but never never bait a oh, like 100 hp your teammate and just so you can get the kill for example the other day we were playing on oregon uh, upstairs and my teammate got downed outside of dorm's window i basically said i'm going to bait him because he was downed he didn't know i was also outside he jumped out I got the kill my teammate did die because obviously he's just one tap he's injured but my i got the refrag on it what well, it puts us back to a 4v4 so we are all fine there but never be a full hp teammate when you're in a five stack you're solo queuing sure bait your team whatever but never do it in a five stack number four is solo queuing now i actually kind of think solo queuing is good if you have a smurf account or a second account or your friend's account or whatever i would say solo queuing is really good to do for improving as yourself because back in ranked 1.0 i used to solo queue and duo queue all the time i never got a five stack it's only i'll say the like 
basically when rank 2.0 came out i started five stacking i started to get take the game serious and five stacking everything and that is unfortunate as well that rank 2.0 kind of came out and that's when I started five stacking and everything you can also tell the difference between my games played as well that I started taking the game series now compared to back then but basically solo queuing is good because back again when I used a solo queue is I had to rely on myself having to not have no call outs nothing like that having to solely rely on myself having to be the hard breacher having to be support having to have really good sound uh, game sense you having to basically do everything and what this allows you to do when you're in a five stack is you don't just have like you just don't just have the aim you don't just have the game sense you have both because you're having to do both of them when you're solo queuing so back when i used to solo queue and duo queue all the time it kind of made me as a better player to how i am now because i have the game sense i have i can win 1v4 situations i can win 1v5 situations I just know how to play these situations when I'm on my own just because on how I used to solo queue and duo queue back in the day. So solo queuing on a smurf or something like that is really good. I also have a second account that I use when I just like solo queue or something like this. My, this is my main account. I only five stack on this account. I only five stack. But I would highly recommend actually solo queuing and getting a different account and solo queue just so you having to learn on how to do everything because yeah i see a lot of people they're like oh it's a 1v4 situation i'm gonna lose never lose your faith like i when i'm in a 1v4 i never panic because i can easily get this you just have to take them out all one by one and not having to push up basically just don't be stupid but because back in the day i used to solo queue i know how to play these situations and know how to work around it and number five is how everyone has a bad game everyone has a bad game i have bad games the other day i went two and seven everyone has bad games don't be too hard on yourself if you have a bad game everyone has bad games i literally went two and seven next next game i had a 2kd the game after that i had a, i went 11 and one everyone has bad games everyone has negative games if we take revolt robbie for example and look at his r6 track he probably has games that are, he's gone negative as well not everyone goes positive every single game. If we just bring up my R6 track real quick. So for example, if you can see here, everyone has bad games. If you see here, 1KD, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 4.5, 0.25, what was absolutely awful, 4, 2.5, 0.6, 1, 0 0.3, 9, 1.25, 0 0.67, 1. We see here, everyone has bad games, everyone has good games. I'll fall off, I'll come back on. I'll fall off, I'll come back on, etc. If we take Revolt Robbie, for example. So if we take Robbie, for example, and then we'll go to his. He has bad games as well. He has good games. Everyone has bad games. Everyone has good games. Don't be too hard on yourself just because your last game, you did really bad. Just forget about the game. If you won the game, amazing. If you just make sure if you have a bad game and you're doing bad, your aim's just not really there. Try and play more supportive. Try and play be more if you all keep going like Ayana and stuff like this just playing like fragger ops try and go on like thermite go on ace go on lion i've been playing lion a lot if i do bad i'll jump on lion because the intel is basically amazing you nothing wrong with having the intel at all so i'll jump on lion i'll jump on the kebby because the kebby is also an amazing op they should use it as a support I'll go something like that and play more for the team. But if my aim is doing like really good and I can, I'm like, okay, my aim is doing good. I'll jump on the fraggers. I'll jump on Mozzie. I'll jump on uh, Ayana. They're normally the ops that I normally go. But if your aim is not there, that game, try and play more supportive. If you go, if you do bad, if you do bad. Everyone has bad games. Don't be too hard on yourself because you had a bad game. But yeah, if any of these tips did help out, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It'd be very much appreciated. And comment down below on what type of video you would like to see next. Either it's tips or whatever, or it's a full gameplay or something like that. Comment down below on what you would like to see. And yeah, see you guys later.